First of all, let me ask this question to each of you. What does this war signify in your view? Professor Higashino first. Okay. Um, well, I've been looking at EU-Ukraine relationship and NATO-Ukraine relationship for, for the past 20 years. And it has been the most exciting academic experience for me to see how Ukraine developed its relationship with the West. On the contrary, for the past two months, it has been the hardest, saddest, and most devastating experience in my whole academic um, relationship. Uh, experience. My only hope is to see the peaceful end of this war without having Ukraine to compromise too much. Great. Dr. Griev. Thank you. For me, it's uh, actually a very personal experience. I lived in Kiev for 12 years, and when I worked as a chief economist of European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, I traveled a lot to Ukraine and, and met many impressive Ukrainian policymakers, business people, civil society leaders, and for me, this is extremely painful. On uh, the Russian side, uh, this war suggests that Mr. Putin ran out of sources of legitimacy and thought that another um, quick, victorious war, like in 2014, when he annexed Crimea, would help him to boost his popularity. But he gravely miscalculated. So I think this is evidence to uh, problems Mr. Uh, Putin was facing within the country and also lack of uh, a lack of information uh, that, uh, that we see uh, within the Kremlin. Thank you. Mr. Bremer. Uh, it's the end of the peace dividend. Uh, we can mark that from 1989 when the wall came down uh, to 2022. Going forward, the Europeans are going to have to prioritize national security, spending on defense. Um, and for Russia, it is the end of a functional relationship with the advanced industrial democracies around the world. It's a new Cold War with Russia and the G7, um, and it's a new Iron Curtain uh, that basically covers Russia, um, a little bit of Belarus, a little bit of Ukraine, and that's about it. Thank you. Dr. Wan. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a very uh, sad and unfortunate to see things unfold in uh, Ukraine. Uh, and uh, this is uh, totally unexpected, <laughs> including China. So, but th I think things happen probably without, uh, not without any uh, reason. I think, of course, uh, uh, there, there, is, uh, there is also a concern, uh, uh, you know, since the Cold War uh, finished. And then I think we, 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 you know, we have to really address that properly. Uh, through the UN, and and also I think we have to really, uh, you know, uh, find a way to peacefully resolve that. That really, I think that everybody, including China, is really like to see that uh, uh, this conflict be uh, finished, uh, you know, ended as soon as possible, and a peaceful solution can be found. Thank you, Professor Nakayama. Well, I guess we knew uh, for some time that the uh, world was tilting toward, you know, great power competition. But we never imagined this exercise of force being this blunt. And uh, we also expected this, you know, emerging competition to be tough as well. But we thought we have sort of established a hurdle to limit the exercise of power. Mm -hmm. But this hurdle was so fragile. And we were shocked to see a single man decision sort of uh, disrupting all the sort of hur hurdles that we've been sort of trying to build. For decades, mm -hmm. you pointed out that he, it was his miscalculation. But what was it that he wanted, and what do you think he wants now? I think the initial plan, and I think uh, we now have a lot of evidence that the initial plan was to take Kiev in a few days, either arrest President Zelensky or make sure he runs away, replace his government with a puppet government, and uh, conclude some kind of deal. Uh, with uh, Russia. So, in a sense, replay 2014, uh, short, victorious, bloodless war in Crimea that uh, boosted uh, Mr. Putin's popularity. Mr. Bremer, as everybody says, the Russian army has said the first phase of the operation is now over. Has Putin lost this first phase already? What's your view? Yeah, Putin, Putin of course, told his people it was successful. Um, that, uh, you know, they've moved forward on denazification and demilitarization. Denazification was always a myth. Uh, demilitarization, it's fairly obvious from the uh, fighting of the Ukrainian forces and the additional weaponry they get from the U.S. and all of NATO 
but that's not happening. Of course, it was a failure. And this is why we've got a big problem. It's why I'm quite negative about the outlook of this war going forward, okay. is that under any scenario that I can imagine, Putin is going to be in materially worse position than he was before he invaded. That will be true politically. That will be true economically. And perhaps most importantly, that will be true geostrategically. I mean, Finland and Sweden are going to join NATO. Ukraine will have much more international support and will be much closer to NATO and the EU than they were before the invasion started. I mean, on every front, this is going to be a massive loss for the man mm -hmm. who controls the most nuclear warheads in the world. That, that's just not where we want the world to be geopolitically right now. Mm -hmm. You have an opinion that China can play a role in, in de-escalating uh, this conflict. How? What has really uh, now uh, really got out of hand now in, in the crisis is that I think the, 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 the negotiation, the, the peaceful negotiation, should be strengthened uh, and supported by the international community. And, uh, and also particularly uh, UN and P5 in the past EU plus Ukraine should really you know, start to talk. Let's have a seven party talks if necessary. And uh, so that use the international guarantor and uh, the countries like uh, uh, you know, China and uh, EU and, and, and uh, you know, France for particularly, you know, uh, let's talk to him. You know, let's have a summit of some kind. But unfortunately, uh, we see the escalating, of course, is going on, and the weaponry uh, uh, are added on the Ukraine side, so there's, there's going to be escalating on both sides. And uh, so it's really difficult to see that uh, uh, ending in any side. So it's very unfortunate. So I really hope that uh, the international community, you know, particularly uh, NATO, EU, US, and China, and uh, let's let's involve uh, uh, Putin to talk, and uh, let's get uh, this gracefully... Uh, you know, uh, uh, saving face to come out as soon as possible. Otherwise, uh, this might got out of control, I, I think. Dr. Wan, you know, President Zelensky has challenged the UN to do a reform and possibly, you know, reform the United Nations Security Council, which, you know, China is a member as well. How do you see the situation from Beijing? I think this, uh, this question is really a, a, a good question, actually. Uh, you know, now the, we are now 77 years uh, after Britain with the system where we set up UN and uh, World Bank, you know, uh, IMF, WTO, you know, GATT at that time. So, so that system, globalization 1.0, had carried us for the last 77 years without a major a third world war, perhaps. Uh, but now that system is really needs to be upgraded. One of the lessons I think we need, I think, I think reform of global system is really uh, probably needed because we are... We are seeing that, uh, particularly the U.S. is backing off uh, uh, those economic uh, uh, global governance that really supported the globalization for the last 77 years. Uh, U.S. Is, is threatening to get out of WTO, pulling out of uh, you know, the TPP, and also uh, you know, uh, create, uh, threaten to create the WHO, things like that, and also not supporting U.N. Uh, strong enough, uh, probably even for the reform as well. Uh, instead, we see the, the the security alliance, the military alliance, is really is is, is boosting up. We have we have NATO, you know, of course, expanded five times uh, towards Russia. We have a five eyes. Uh, we have now uh, AUKUS, which is you know on a submarine, submarine, nuclear submarine, actually for the for the Asia Pacific. And now we have we have QUA, a mini NATO now established in Asia now. So that's very dangerous. We are pushing up the world drive out the military budget of every country, and that is really <laughs> very dangerous. On the contrary, I think the global governance, including UN system, should be strengthened more on the economic side. So, for example, like China is doing on, on this Belt and Road you know, initiative, China is doing on this uh, joining the RCEP, the largest free trade agreement in the world now, and China is applying to join CPTPP, which is designed by the U.S., and also China is uh, trying to join DEPA. And also, of course, China has signed this uh, comprehensive investment treaty with, with, uh, with the EU, and also China is working with African on the corporation. So I think those economic alliances, rather than the secure alliances, is really making us more intertwined. And that would be really great to secure the peace. So I think U.S. should be reformed in terms of strengthening the economic uh, element of that. WTO should be reformed. And, and uh, you know, inter global corporate tax, minimum tax should be, should be strengthened. That is the way to go, rather than we are really... Uh, you know, isolating on all the military side of every every country, and that is really dangerous.